Okay, it's been a year and a half. Um, I've wanted to make this video for a year and a half now. It has to do with the Nano VNA. And a lot of people want to know, does the Nano VNA have the accuracy of an expensive VNA? And uh, so I don't have an expensive VNA, but my friend does. And my friend uh, allowed me to come over and do a bunch of tests on his VNA. Um, I was the first person to enter his house in a year and a half. <laughs> That's how locked down things have been around here. Um, so, yeah, I was very privileged to uh, to get to go into his uh, into his studio again. He's got this great setup there with all kinds of cool instruments and stuff. He's been working at home for a year and a half, so he's got all this cool stuff he got to borrow from from work and stuff. The VNA is his own, though. He purchased the VNA. It's an old HP VNA, but it's a good one. Um, so anyway, so this video is going to be kind of in two parts, maybe even three. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to um, uh, show you the measurements that we did over at his house, okay? Um, most of those are going to be just photographs of the measurements, and I'm going to be doing a voiceover on all of those things. And then uh, we'll come back and... Uh, I'm going to re repeat all the measurements with my uh, Nano VNA H4. Uh, it has the latest uh, Dislord software in it, so it's got uh, uh, 401 calibration points in it and uh, set to 0 to 1.5 gigahertz. And so we will compare uh, my friend's VNA 1 to 0 to 1.5 gigahertz and this 0 to 1.5 gigahertz, okay? So the other thing that I should mention is um, calibration standards. So the calibration standards, uh, a lot of the measurements are going to be referenced to one cal set. And they are the cal set that I built. Uh, so all of the measurements are going to be referenced off of this. So we use this to calibrate his VNA and we used it to calibrate uh, my VNA, okay? And uh, I've swept this up before, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an okay load. And what we're going to be measuring is a, th a few things, but uh, first and foremost is this board that I did. Um, this is one of those um, uh, VNA demo boards that you can get from Amazon and eBay and all those other places. Um, and uh, I built a special version that has all SMA connectors on it. I removed all of the components from one of those test boards and moved them onto my board. And um, anyway, it has repeatable connectors on it and stuff. So we use this. So uh, basically what we're going to do is measure each one of these, okay, uh, on his, and then measure them all again on the Nano uh, H4. And then we'll make some comparisons and draw some conclusions. Um, but uh, yeah, here we go. All right, here we are at my friend's house. First, let's look at the instrument. Um, it's a um, multi-unit um, spectrum analyzer, and it's all in a rack. So it takes up a lot of space. Uh, this is definitely old school. All right, so the base measurement unit is an HP 8510B. Uh, that's the basically the bottom two boxes. The next part is the actual um, S-parameter test set. It's an 8514B. Then the uh, stimulation is done with an 8530B sweep generator with an 83592A plug-in uh, for the sweeper that goes between 10 megahertz and 20 gigahertz. And then he also has one of the old cool uh, spectrum analyzers up on top there in 8566B. All right, the first measurement's gonna be on the connector marked open. The VNA shows some electrical length uh, past the calibration plane, goes about uh, 90 degrees around the uh, Smith chart. The measurement on the Nano, uh, has a little bit of error at the higher frequencies. It's moving a little bit towards the center. It's not staying on the outside of the circle, but it also goes about uh, 90 degrees around the uh, uh, phase of emission. The next measurement is the connector mark short. Uh, the VNA shows a little bit of electrical length. 
traveling maybe 15 degrees uh, around the chart. And the uh, nano VNA is uh, not showing any electrical length, so that's interesting. Next measurement is a connector marked load. And this is the HP VNA. And the nano VNA showing about the uh, about the same picture. Next measurement is the connector marked 33 ohms. The uh, VNA has a little uh, a little half circle that measures 33.6 ohms at 45 megahertz. It is measuring 40.5 ohms at 1.5 gigahertz. The nano VNA is measuring about 40.8 ohms at 15, uh, 1500 hertz. The nano VNA is measuring about 40.8 ohms at uh, 1.5 gigs. Next measurement is the connector mark 75 ohms. And the two VNAs are getting similar results. Uh, the next measurement is the connector marked C. This is just a capacitor to ground. Two VNAs are matched pretty well, except for the uh, nano VNA is giving us some irregularities around the uh, high end, the uh, 1.5 gigahertz end. Next measurement is the connector marked L. This is just a inductor to ground. Uh, we're getting a typical plot on the HP. And the nano VNA gives a similar plot, but once again, has some irregularities at uh, 1.5 gigahertz. All right, the next measurement is a connector marked CL slash R which is a capacitor and inductor in series with a resistor parallel. The two VNAs seem to uh, depart quite a bit here. The HP VNA seems to give a typical plot starting at a point and then circling around to where the short would be. The Nano VNA uh, seems to make a long excursion, so I don't quite understand that one. Next measurement is the connector marked C, space, L in parallel with R. So it's a capacitor in series with an inductor and resistor in parallel to ground. The next measurement is the connector marked CL. This is a capacitor and inductor to ground. The next measurement is connector mark CR, which is a capacitor and resistor to ground. All right, the next test is the 433 megahertz saw filter. Uh, this shows the peak wavelength. This shows a wavelength at a little notch. I use the wavelength at the little notch as a marker for frequency accuracy and have discovered that the HP VNA uh, has about a one megahertz error. It's low by one megahertz. Now, if you were operating it at 10 gigahertz, it would be 10.001. You can call that pretty good. But uh, down at 400 megahertz, it is a bit off. The final measurement is of a um, 850 megahertz diplexer. This shows off the dynamic range of the unit. So the HP unit has a dynamic range of about 70 dB. The, the nano VNA has a dynamic range of about 50 dB. So you get an extra 20 dB out of the, uh, the uh, fancy analyzer. All right, that was a lot of measurements. Um, so 
what's my impression? What's, what's my final verdict here? Um, nano DNAs are great. Um, they are an amazing value for money. Um, my experience with all of these tests and everything is that there's basically three things I think you would do comparing VNAs. One would be uh, frequency accuracy, uh, one would be phase information accuracy, and then one would be dynamic range. All right, so I think um, that you first have to know that this is not a, a 20 gigahertz device, right? It, it only goes up to, they claim, 1.5 gigahertz. In the testing that I did, I would say don't go above 1.3. Above 1.3, it, it just got too noisy for me. So um, now remember that I have uh, the uh, H4 unit. I don't know any other ones. I haven't, I haven't done a heads to heads comparison, only, only this one. And it does have the latest uh, Dislord software in it, which is much better than the original VNA software, right? It has 401 uh, calibration points. I believe the HP instrument that we looked at also has 401 calibration points. So it's kind of apples and apples there. Um, so uh, having said that, this is a great analyzer from zero to 1.3 gigahertz. And it is accurate for frequency. It is quite, uh, quite good. It's within half a hertz from measurements that I've made with, with references and stuff, it seems to be within about a half a hertz. So it's, it's, it's a nice little synthesizer. It's completely synthesized. And uh, so it does well in the frequency domain. Phase information. I think the phase information is going to also be uh, uh, almost the same between the two instruments. Phase is a very in, uh, easy thing to measure. And we're only talking about up to 1.3 gigahertz. So it should be really, really easy to do phase. And so this instrument, uh, I think, does that really, really well, too. Now, I did see some discrepancies between the two when it came to phase information and stuff. So, you know, I say that with a little bit of trepidation, but I think, in general, I think this is doing just a great job at, at, at phase information. Now, uh, to no surprise, if you know anything about these instruments, the, the HP instrument has much better dynamic range, way better dynamic range. And so uh, that's, where, that's where the shortcomings of this is. Uh, it's just gonna have uh, a noise floor that's just uh, not quite a, uh, a good VNA. Um, but, um, you know, when do you care about that? You know, not often, maybe a duplexer or something, um, but often you don't need the dynamic range. And so, uh, yeah, I think it, it held up really, really well. Um, another um, kind of a, a, a point in favor of nano VNAs is the guy who I went and visited. Um, he's got either one or two, I think he has two now, uh, nano VNAs that he uses for work. Okay. So he's got a fancy VNA and at work, he has access to million dollar VNAs. Um, but when it comes down to troubleshooting a little tiny things, um, getting a rough idea and stuff, you know, um, you know, sometimes a multimeter is all you need. Sometimes you need a seven and a half digit, you know, fancy machine, but sometimes a little quick little multimeter is all you need. Well, a lot of times a, a cheap little DNA is all you need. So I know that he uses it specifically to look at uh, uh, grounds and impedances and stuff on fancy PC boards he's doing. He's, he's operating at very, very high frequencies and impedance control is very, very important to him. And to be able just to grab the, v, the, the little nano VNA and hook it up right on his desk doesn't have to walk over to a VNA somewhere. Um, it's very, very valuable to him, right? It's like having a pocket oscilloscope, right? They can be valuable in some circumstances, but they're, you know, really poor in other circumstances. Um, but in general, I think the nano VNA has held up really well against a, a fancy, a fancy VNA.